welcome to the beauty dish. Today I'm doing my top five fragrances for fall. So I have the five fragrances that I have been wearing since we're well into fall and that I've kind of become obsessed with this year and that I'll continue to wear until I get into full on heavy winter hibernation sort of mode. I also have two honorable mentions. Um, these are the two that I've sampled and worn but I, that I like, that I think other people will like for fall, but that I don't want to wear for myself. Um, most of these fragrances, I guess five out of the seven are unisex, I'm pretty sure that's right. So there's kind of something for everyone on here, I think, and I've been wanting to do this video since I did the um, fall fragrance community collaboration where a whole bunch of reviewers got together and we talked about our one or two favorite picks for fall. So I will link that video if you don't know about it, if you haven't seen it, it's on Chad's channel, White Spirit Bear, it'll be linked below, check it out, find a whole bunch of other awesome fragrance reviewers. But so I wanted to elaborate on my list of fall fragrances and this is what I came up with. So I'm going to start with the honorable mentions and the first one is L'Ombre des Merveilles by Hermès. So, so this is Jean-Claude Elena's 2012 flanker to L'Eau de Merveilles and there are other flankers too, um, Elixir, Claire de Merveilles I want to say. But anyway, this one is all about amber so it's a bit sweet. But the opening, I think, is my favorite part. So, L'Eau de Merveille is all about creating this, this accord around ambergris that really evokes this kind of dirty, salty ocean sensation. But, of course, done in that really elegant, subtle, wearable, sheer Hermes style. So, this one is all of those things, but with the really beautiful, sweet amber note. So back to the opening, that's where I get that little bit of salty, dirty ocean funk, but the amber is there almost from the start, and I guess that's sort of why this one is the honorable mention. I'm not a big sweet, sweet person, so <laughs> that sounds rotten. So the amber doesn't really do it for me, and if this fragrance changed maybe a little more, maybe I'd get into it, like if the amber came more into the dry down. But, but it doesn't. It's all about amber. So if you love amber, you have to smell this one if you have not already. There is a little kind of woodsiness to balance things out, but it really is about the amber and it is lovely. This is kind of a casual fragrance you could wear. You could wear this anytime. This is an anytime fragrance, but I do see it as more casual. It's sophisticated. I think it's safe for work unless you just work someplace that's totally scent phobic. Um, and anyone could wear it. This is totally unisex, and, but you do have to like sweet fragrances. My second honorable mention is Field Notes from Paris by Iniki. So I talked about this one in, it was actually my very, my last fragrance video, and I reviewed Iniki's whole alphabetical collection. And this is the one that I said is so masculine to me that I, I just can't wear it. And I tried. And it's it hangs around for such a long time, at least eight hours, and once you do get to the dry down, that's when I like it. The dry down is warm and beautiful and leather and smoke and vanilla, and it's great. But the opening is kind of a traditional masculine cologne, except more intense, heavier, um, just richer, bergamot, a little menthol. Um, let me look at the notes. There are quite a few notes in here. Some herbs. So it's that whole like herbal, a little bit barber shoppy thing, but but really heavy. I wouldn't say oppressive, but it's heavy and it's masculine. And then the heart notes. There's tobacco and patchouli. Let's see what else do we have? Um, cedar. So so we are we're, we're feeling very manly. And I even get a little sensation of like the moth repelling type of the cedar. Um, I think this would smell great on a man, and I think it's perfect for fall. I can just see a really, I don't know, not not a young, not an old guy, kind of just some, somehow a guy whose age you can't really tell, just like sitting in an outdoor cafe in a nice leather jacket because it's definitely chilly, it's definitely fall outside, drinking a coffee, writing down his deep thoughts in his journal, you know, because of course he's not using an iPad. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you can still follow along with me, this is a great scent. This is a scent for the guys. Aniki's a great brand if you haven't checked it out. My review um, will be listed below. So it really is a great fall scent, but one, unlike L'Ombre de Marvais, I cannot wear this one. All right, so now let's move into the five that I have been wearing, that I am wearing. Um, I only own one full bottle um, from this list of five. The others are samples or decants that I've purchased or obtained by begging at department stores and whatnot. So these are in no particular order. I can't rank them that way because it's not, it's not about how much I like each fragrance. It's about am I in the mood to wear it. So when I'm in the mood for the particular one, then that's the number one fragrance, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to start with a fairly new release by the House of Arquiste, and it's the Architects Club. So I tried this at a perfume shop, and I was curious about it because I'd read so much about it, but I was convinced that it was kind of just hyped up, that it was just something that everyone was sampling and writing about on the blogs, etc. And I didn't think I'd really fall for it, but I loved it. It's the fragrance that you want to wear when you don't know what to wear, when you want just something simple but also totally gorgeous and addictive. So the idea behind the Architects Club is <laughs> the story that the company gives that inspired this perfume is a group of architects getting together at an art deco bar for cigarettes and martinis and you know we're in London in the 1930s so there's all this there's all this you know connotation of glamour but what it really is is a great citrusy herbal opening and it evokes a gin and tonic and let me tell you I love a gin and tonic so there's a little lime in there there's juniper you there's kind of just a citrus accord that's really well blended and then there's just a hint of smoke. And I'm not someone who loves smoke and perfume, but I almost wish there was a tiny bit more smoke. So it's very subtle. If you're worried about smokiness, incense, tobacco, it's, it's very subtle and it works really well to just warm, more, warm up and deepen that herbal lime opening. And really, the, what this fragrance is for most of its life is a beautiful, not too sweet vanilla. So the opening you'll get for a while, you know, but within an hour you're moving into that vanilla. And I don't really care for vanilla perfumes. I don't like perfumes that smell like a cupcake or like I just baked a cake and there's vanilla in it. This one is just like the pure vanilla extract without the sugar. And I just love it. I'm just glued to my arm while I'm wearing this. And I've been wearing it often because it's, like I said, the thing that you put on when you're not in the mood for something challenging. Uh, you don't want a real thinker, but at the same time, it's not boring at all. Um, it has really nice longevity, especially with all the like citrus and bright stuff going on on top. It's, it's just great. It's just multi-purpose. It's totally unisex. I think this was even sort of talked about as leaning more masculine, but for me, it's 100% unisex. I don't feel even remotely unfeminine wearing it, I think it's fantastic. My next pick for fall 2014 is one that I'm really excited to talk about. It's by Olympic Orchids, uh, which is an independent perfumer in the Pacific Northwest, and it is Lil, L-I-L. So this fragrance came out a few years ago, and it was inspired by a novel by Sheila Ed Edinburgher. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sheila. Sheila Egenberger's novel, Quantum Demonology. No. Now, I have not read this book, but this perfume, like somehow in conjunction with the author, it, it was inspired by the character Lil in the book, who is the, I believe, ex-wife of, of the devil. And what this is all about is lime and smoke, citrus and smoke. And I love it. I haven't smelled anything like this anywhere else. The thing about the citrus, it's not just a nice lime, it's not just a nice lemon, it's kaffir lime, it's that Indian lime, so it's just a little bit different. And if you're familiar with, if you've eaten Indian food, if you've experienced those flavors, you'll probably pick out that kaffir lime. But there's another note that, when I saw that this note was included in the perfume, I was, I was reading or reading a review of it, and this note was mentioned, and I just lost my mind, and I went and I ordered these samples. And that note is cuta, which is the flower of the pandanus plant. And 
I have tasted it as pandan leaf. It's an ingredient that's used a lot in Thai cooking and it's really hard to find here. I've never, I don't know where I could get the actual leaf here, but I've seen pandan extract and it's just this, it's, it's a green flavor. It's not sweet, but it's not savory. It's hard to describe, but it's so distinct. And knowing that it's in this perfume and being able to pick it out is really cool. And under those, you know, sort of Southeast Asian citrus notes, there's this warm, sinister, but not even remotely off-putting smoke. Um, I can see this fragrance working well in the summer, but early fall is when I've been loving it, when it's just really shine for me. I really want a full bottle of this. It's kind of an anytime fragrance. Again, it's, it's casual, probably more daytime. It has a bit of projection, but it's, it's not going to, you know, choke anybody out with smoke or anything like that. Um, it's definitely unisex. I think it's, I think it's completely unisex. Some of you might even think it's more masculine, but I, I just love it. The next fragrance on my list is actually inspired by another reviewer here on YouTube, Lanyard Smith. Um, I did a video a while back where I said I wanted to do a, a fall fragrance video and does anyone have any suggestions for me to include or that I should try? And Lanyard said Mitsuko. And I said, oh yes, totally, because I've kind of just come around to loving Mitsuko. I got a decant of it months back and at first it was totally off-putting and then I tried it again and I thought, hmm, this is really interesting. And then I tried it again and I was totally in love with it. And now I just can't get enough. It is, it is such a, it's definitely a thinker. It's definitely engaging, maybe even a little challenging, depending on how you feel about the smell of petrol and rubber and this kind of bitter, dark, gasoline-y thing. And that is the whole opening of Mitsuko. So this kind of bitter petrol opening it really does last for a while. You're going to be smelling this for a couple of hours, and it's even slightly astringent. It's something, it's something to get used to. This is definitely not a blind buy sort of fragrance, but once that sort of burns off, this sort of warmer, softer, fruity floral thing enters in, and you hear peach mentioned a lot with Mitsuko, and this is not a delicious peachy perfume. It's not but there is that hint of furry peach skin and peach pit mixed in with this rose and jasmine and it just kind of softens that petrol and carries you really smoothly into the most gorgeous dry down. There is vetiver and oak moss listed in the notes but I don't know, this is a guerlain, right? That doesn't do it justice. <laughs> It becomes the most gorgeous smelling skin that your skin would ever be and it lasts and lasts and it's just beautiful. And I love it for fall because Mitsuko to me is driving on a bright sunny fall afternoon with all the leaves blowing past you as you drive down the road and the trees and all the gorgeous fall colors and you know you're in the car there's the gasoline there's the smoky exhaust but then there's the the crispness of all the nature around you and maybe you're eating a peach and that's Mitsuko it is just it just says fall and even though this is a classic fragrance that was first created in 1919 it to me smells like modernity. It it just that's that's how I think about Mitsuko. It's it's so interesting, and I'm gonna do a full review on it, so I will just shut up now. The concentration I have is the Eau de Parfum, and with Guerlain, the different concentrations aren't just different strengths. They can sort of emphasize different notes and smell a little different. So I actually really need to spend some time with the Eau de Toilette as well, but I really like the EDP gorgeous fall fragrance. Um, this is unisex. This is totally unisex, even though it's totally marketed to women, but give it a shot. If you've never smelled Mitsuko, everyone needs to smell it. So thank you, Lanyard, for reminding me that Mitsuko is a perfect fall fragrance. I'll link to Lanyard's channel and to his amazing fragrance blog below, so go check him out, please. Okay, the last two scents on my list are the ones that I mentioned in the uh, Fragrance Reviewers collaboration video, so I won't spend too much time there. The first one is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. I love Hypnotic Poison. Okay, I bought a bottle at this point, what, like 12 years ago, and I don't have a full bottle now, but 
I love it. I have a decant now. And the opening is root beer. It's root beer mixed with cherry Dr. Pepper and it's spicy, it's mysterious, it's, you know, the or this oriental spicy almond vanilla kind of thing, but the whole experience is really light and sheer and it has this lift that's like the fizziness of that root beer and it's really fun to wear, but it's also sexy and unique and different, especially for, you know, a mainstream designer fragrance. This stuff is unique and just really fabulous. I think this is a good um, going out scent. It's not so much a daytime scent, but it's, it's not heavy either, which is why I have it on the list for fall. Um, there's fruit in the notes as well, but really I just get that great root beer fizzy soda thing. This is a probably going to be on the feminine side. Actually this one and my last one are the feminines. I think everything else I've talked about could be worn by men and women and anyone else. <laughs> okay, my final scent, and I have to say I didn't do an order, but this is my favorite. Um, this is my most recent uh, fragrance acquisition and I do actually have the full bottle. It was an early birthday present and when I first smelled it in the store, I, I put it, I sprayed it on my arm and sniffed it and, you know, hung out for a few minutes and immediately decided I wanted the full bottle. And I never do that. I, I usually have a rule that I will get a sample and wear it for at least a day before I even think about buying a full bottle, but I knew this was the one. I just knew it. And <laughs> it is um, Ormond Woman by Ormond Jane. And I still, I keep it in the box because it's so flippin' beautiful. It's a cool box, and it's in this nice little satiny sort of bed, and it's, it's a gorgeous bottle. It's heavy. It's beautiful. It's stuck in here really nicely, so it's not going to fall out, but there's the bottle. The juice is pale green, which is appropriate because this is a woodsy, witchy fragrance with some really fantastic green elements. The big heart note is black hemlock, and that has a, a kind of piney, pine tree sort of feeling, and it's, you know, mixed in with some florals in the heart, and the dry down is, is woodsy, and this is, this is not a dry woods, it's, it's damp, it's misty, but before we get to all that, the opening of this scent is the most delicious gorgeous natural cardamom note. And this is a special fragrance. I think it's a going out, formal, um, it, when you just want to smell gorgeous and bewitching and sexy. And it's Ormond Woman. It is more feminine, but it's not conventionally feminine. It doesn't use any of those feminine tropes um, like blousy white florals and roses and jam and any any of that, you know, stereotypically feminine stuff, it is just adult and sexy and it's great for fall, but it's also going to go straight into the winter. I'm just, I am just all about this stuff right now. So that is my list of top fall fragrances, my picks, what I have been wearing, what I'm going to be wearing, and what I think you should check out. So thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know if you've tried any of these fragrances. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions based on what I said. I'm always, I always want to try new stuff. So thanks again for watching and have a wonderful fragrant day.